service for Sunday, June the 13th, our service of the, of the Word for the time after Pentecost. And thank you to Vi for playing, and Dolores for being our reader, and for John for being A.V. I invite you to follow along if you have a grad book with you at home, and we will announce the hymn numbers. If you'd like to pick up a hymn book to borrow and follow along, please call this week at the church. For those wondering when we'll be reopening under the new stages, Council is meeting this Tuesday and we'll be starting to put together the plan for reopening. So by next Saturday and Sunday, hopefully you'll receive more information on that. And if you want to have the sermon and worship file, please go to our website where they're also printed. Let's take time now to listen to our gathering song from Gather Us In. Number 532. Verses 22 to 24. A reading from Ezekiel. Tree energy is used in a Mosaic prophecy to tell how the Lord will choose someone from Judah's royal family, the cedar tree, to reign over all creation. This tree will be planted on Mount Zion, the location of the holy temple. Thus says the Lord. I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of a cedar. I will set it out. I will break off a tender one from the topmost of its young twigs. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel, I will plant it in order that it may produce boughs and bear fruit and become a noble cedar. Under it, every kind of bird will live, in the shade of its branches will nest. 
winged creatures of every kind. All the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree. I bring high the low tree. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will accomplish it. The word of the Lord. Consider Jesus from a human perspective, but through the eyes of faith, believing he died for all and was raised. All who are in Christ are now in God's new creation. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please Him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that no one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. 
From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. The word of the Lord. Prepare to hear the words of the gospel with this acclamation. Hallelujah. With, welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the fourth chapter. Jesus frequently uses parables to teach ordinary people as they are able to hear and understand. Images of sowing and growing show the vitality of God's kingdom. Jesus said, the God kingdom of God is as someone would scatter seed on the ground, and would sleep and rise night and day. And the seed would sprout and grow, he does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them, as they were able to hear him. He did not speak it except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Pastor Katie Stenta observed in a blog entry this past week that in this reading from Mark, Jesus says that the kingdom of heaven starts small, with seeds that have to struggle to grow. It cannot be fashioned all at once, but can be watered and given warm sunshine and good nourishment to grow and to flourish. With this in mind, there is no question that the kingdom of heaven will flourish someday that heaven's branches will stretch out, that there is enough room for each and every person, each and every bird to make a home. It seems in heaven there will be no distinction as to what kind of bird we are, what colors our plumes are, what our genders and sexualities will be. This is not a question, she says, of who is getting into the kingdom but the assurance that though the number of entry will be great, there will be enough room. How then can we ensure this growth? How can we be part of the flourishing of this kingdom that includes all people, sheltering, resting in its branches and in its shade? In our second reading, Paul tells those at Corinth, So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please Christ. All that we do, contends the Apostle, is to reveal that if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. And so also we will later ask in the Lord's Prayer, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Those who live by faith, says Paul, are part of this kingdom building. The 
thing is, events of this past week, nearby and farther afield, again have reminded us we don't seem to be building the kingdom of God in such a way that it has room for all. Last Wednesday, people gathered at Waverley Park for a vigil to honor those killed in London because of their faith. 215 hours passed remembering those bodies of residential school children found in camps. Over orange ribbons and shirts remind us still of the deaths of so many more. News about standoffs on Simpson Street, drug busts and increases in domestic violence assault our ears. That large mustard tree of a kingdom can someday seem so small and fragile and so empty. The exact opposite of what Jesus imagines in our reading. I believe that one of the misunderstandings that we can take from this parable is that somehow we are alone are responsible for all of this growth to happen. That is, when we fail as humankind, as we have seen again in the past week, we fail in our work to bring in God's reign, God's dwelling place for God's people. And as Jesus reminds us today, we are not the ones in charge. Luther adds to this in his explanation of the Lord's Prayer in his small catechism teaching book. God's kingdom comes on its own without our prayer. But we ask in this prayer that it may also come to us. Similarly, God's good and gracious will comes about without our prayer. We ask in this prayer that it may also come about in and among us. We hear more about this action of the Creator in our reading from Ezekiel. That ancient prophet is announcing the rebuilding of Jerusalem after the exile to Babylon and the perceived judgments of God against the covenant people. The image shared is that the Creator will initiate the restoration, starting with a sprig. Planting this tender twig, the Creator promises to nurture it and to cause it to grow in order that it may produce boughs and bear fruit and become a noble cedar. With this in mind, this new kingdom will be infinitely greater than the one destroyed. In words that Jesus later uses, not only those forced from Israel, but all people, every kind of bird, will find a home there. There will finally be peace once more across the world as in the shade of its branches will nest winged creatures of every kind. Tyler Mayfield has written about this. The parable imagines a way forward for ancient Israel, a way that preserves some continuity with the old way of life. It is a twig from the top of a current tree but a way that imagines something new as well. A new location, a new tree, new branches. All this is under the watchful attention of God. Pastor Stenta further comments, it is, I admit, a confusing concept that we have no control over this plant and little, if any, influence. But it is still important.
important for us to interact and to support the growth of the kingdom of heaven. It is also a relief that the kingdom of God is not in our hands. Its nature and its flourishing is not up to us. The choosing of who will live with us and make a nest in the kingdom of heaven is again nowhere close to what it is we have to be worrying about. In this we see God's independence, control, and grace. So then what, as Paul alludes to, is to be our role in building this kingdom? Our job, as Sir Senta, is, as always, is to be a witness to its grace and to tell the good news of its openness to all those whom we meet and to strive to be faithful witnesses, eschewing caveats and exceptions, avoiding the old so human temptation to act as judge to instead spread the good news far and wide that the tree of heaven will be a home unlike any we've ever known, welcoming of all creation and without limits in terms of room. An American Lutheran pastor, Jesse Obrecht, sees Paul's words in our second reading as an understanding of our part in the growth of the heavens. Everything old has passed away. Everything has become new are the final words of our reading. Transformation seems to be the emphasis for Paul as he urges the Corinthians onward in their walk of faith. He encourages them to have confidence in God and in the work God is doing, can do, and will continue to do. He names the reality of the limitations of the body, humanity, and even our inability to physically see that all that faith has to offer. Yet Paul continues to ground the Corinthians in this idea that all is and will continue to be transformed through Christ. This message, notes Obrecht, seems especially appropriate coming from Paul, the Christian persecutor turned Christian evangelist. Through Christ's love and the active word of God, there was meaningful and groundbreaking transformation that happened in Paul's life. He walked away from everything he knew, and in an act of faith, let all that he had clung to die and fall away to follow Christ. The motive for both he and the Corinthians to be transformed is not Paul's love, not success, not earthly motivations, but the pure and unending love of Jesus Christ. This love is reflected in the cross, yes, but also in the love that they share for one another as they figure out how to be this new thing that we will someday call church. So it is by Christ's love for us and for all people that God calls us and equips us to help imagine and to help grow the kingdom. We won't always see it. We'll sometimes find it too difficult to build, that there are too many forces against it. At other moments, we won't like how God tells us to change within ourselves so that others may find places in it. And as Luther says, God is at work with or without us. 
Creator invites us to be part of this growth until all people find a welcome, a place in this tree, this community, in God's new place, built on grace, forgiveness, love, and welcome. For the hymn of the day, we listen to We Are All One in Mission from our Red Book number 576. Sovereign God, we give thanks and pray for our sister congregations, Trinity in Berglund and Zion in Fort Francis. Soon may songs once more ring from their sanctuaries. Lord, in your mercy. Eternal God, we give thanks for our ancestors in the faith, who are now at home with you. We look forward to that day when we are reunited in your new creation. Lord, in your mercy. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, 
Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. For gifts received and shared this past week, let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, Gather what has been sown among us. Make us to be your body for the life of the world. Amen. Now receive God's blessing. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Our sending song comes from Go My Children With My Blessing, number 543. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm. 